Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year. As today we are on day 279. Uh, so uh, we are reading through the Holy Bible, uh, the New International Version, in 365 days. Uh, today we are in the period of uh, return, return from exile. Uh, so there's many stages that we've gone through already. Um, at this point in time, remember after King David, who is kind of the golden era of Judaism, uh, we see Solomon, is it's handed off to Solomon. Solomon um, takes on, builds the temple of God uh, in Jerusalem. Then we see him um, marrying a whole bunch of wives and concubines, and his heart has moved away from God. Uh, God says, because of this, I'm going to take the kingdom away from you, and I'm going to break it uh I'm going to break it up, and uh, because of your disobedience uh, to me, uh, then this falls breaking into two different tribes. One tribe in the north uh, that is ten of the uh, ten of the twelve uh, tribes of Israel, and the south that's two tribes. Then we see the ten tribes are taken into exile by the Assyrians, and then later Babylon comes and takes over them and the southern kingdom of Judah. 70 years they wander um, from in exile, and then after this they are called back when Persia takes over uh, Babylon and Assyria, and they allow them to go back to Judea, to Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple, and that's what we're talking about here in these readings. And so we're at this time of return from exile, after 70, day, or 70 years of wandering, um, not in the desert, but in wandering around in all these other um cities and countries outside of the promised land and so we're going to be talking about this in our reading today in nehemiah chapter 11 and proverbs chapter 21 17 to 20 a little bit about each of the readings um, nehemiah chapter 11 in chapter 11 we see the people cast lots to determine who will live in jerusalem everyone in the 12 tribes of israel was given something much of the story though has been one of betrayal with many being foolish or wicked with the gifts they were given. The prophets clearly proclaimed that people would not be judged for the sins or virtues of their parents, but only for their own. Our families contribute to who we are, but it does not completely define us. We can break from any sinful patterns we pick up in our family, and we can choose to be virtuous. Only with the leading of God, though. Remember that. Um, in Proverbs chapter 21, verses 17 to 20, Solomon here gives a contrast between the life of a fool and the life of the righteous. Uh, though both may have stores of wealth, as it talks about like choice food and oil, the fool is driven to poverty and ends up devouring all that they have. Where the righteous um, be, succeed and um, live lives that are not just uh, full of of um, wealth in the physical sense, uh, but more so wealth in the spiritual sense uh, that they that they begin to grow in the in the the things of God, uh, walk in the ways of God, and and by doing that, um, the fruits of the spirit begin to grow within them, and they begin to be transformed by those things. And so it's important that we always are open to the moving of the Holy Spirit within us, in order that God might grow those gifts within us, and that we might exemplify the things of God uh, in our lives, and that, that that might make our lives flourish, not like the fool who is who begins to devour everything, that anything good that he may have once, he or she may have once had. And so, this is what we read in Nehemiah and Prophets. Let's get into it with Nehemiah chapter 11. Now the leaders of the people settled in Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of every ten to live in Jerusalem, the holy city, while the remaining nine were to stay in their own towns. The people commend, commanded all the men who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. These are the provincial leaders who settled in Jerusalem. Now some Israelites, priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants lived in the towns of Judah, each on his own property in the various towns, while other people from both Judah and Benjamin lived in Jerusalem. From the descendants of Judah, Athaiah, son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, 
the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son Mahalal, a descendant of Perez, and Messiah, son of Baruch, the son of Colhose, the son of Hazia, the son of Adia, the son of Jorab, the son of Zechariah, a descendant of Shelah. The descendants of Perez, who lived in Jerusalem, totaled 468 able men. From the descendants of Benjamin, Salu, son of Meshulam, the son, son of Joad, the son of Padiah, the son of Coliah, the son of Messiah, the son of Ithiel, the son of Meshiah, uh, Jesh, Jeshiah, and his followers, Gebai and Salai, 928 men. Joel, son of Zikri, was their chief officer, and Judah, son of Hesanua, was over the second district of the city. From the priests, Judiah, son of Joreb, Jachin, Sarai, son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Marioth, the son of Ahitub, supervisor in the house of God, and their associates who carried on work from the temple, 822 men, Adiah, son of Joraham, the son of Palai, Palai, the son of Amzi, the son of Zechariah, the son of Pashur, the son of Milkajah, and his associates who are heads of the families, 242 men. Amashai, son of Azarel, the son of Haz Azai, the son of Meshilamoth, the son of Immer, and his associates who are able men, 128. Their chief officer was Zabdiel, son of Hegadolim. From the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashub, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Buni, Shabbatai, and Josabad, two of the heads of the Levites, who had charged the outside work of the house of God, Mataniah, son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, the director who led in thanksgiving and prayer, Bakbukiah, second amongst his associates, and Abda, son of Shamua, the son of Galal, the son of Jajuthun, a Levite in the holy city, two, total 284. The gatekeepers, Akub, Talmon, and their associates who kept watch at the gates, 172 men. The rest of the Israelites with the priests and Levites were in all the towns of Judah, each on his ancestral property. The temple servants lived on the hill of Ophel, and Ziha and Gishpa were in charge of them. The chief officer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzi, son of Bani, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Math Mathaniah, the son of Micah. Uzi was one of Ashish's descendants, who were the singers responsible for the service of the house of God, the singers who were under the king's orders, which regulated their daily activities. Pethahiah, son of Meshezebel, one of the descendants of Zerah, son of Judah, was the king's agent in all affairs relating to the people. As for the villages with their fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kirith Arba, and its surrounding settlements, and Debon, and its settlements in Jacob Zeal, and its villages, in Jeshua, in Molada, in Beth Palette, in Hazar Shul, in, in Beersheba, and its settlements, in Ziklag, in Mechana, and its settlements, in En Ramon, in Zora, in Jarmuth. Zenoa, 
Adulam, and in their villages, in Lachish and its fields, and in Azekah and its settlements. So they were living all the way from Beersheba to the valley of Hinnom. The descendants of Benjamin, from Geba living in Michmash, Aja, Bethel, and its settlements, in Anathoth, Nob, and Ananiah, in Hazer, Ramah and Gitam, and Hadid, Zebom, and Nebalat, in Lod, and Ono, and in the valley of the craftsmen. Some of the divisions of Levites of Judah settled in Benjamin. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Proverbs chapter 21, verses 17 to 20. He who loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine and oil will never be rich. The wicked become a ransom for the righteous, and the unfaithful for the upright. Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and ill-tempered wife. In the house of the wise are stores of choice, food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. Here ends our second reading. Um, it's apparent here that um, it is not good to be foolish. Um, that it is not good to uh, live a life um, in contention with ho hostile um, whether it's with a hostile wife or um, putting our love in things that do not prosper. When we look upon um, wine and oil uh, in love, we will never be rich. If we take pleasure in, uh, in doing those things of our own um, and by our own, uh, we will only reap um, destruction and devour our own. And so... We are called to be righteous, to walk upright, uh, to not ransom um, those things in which um, bring about unfaithfulness, but that we uh, take pleasure in God and God alone. Uh, and we see in Nehemiah uh, also this idea that um, what it is to walk in the in the in the ways of God. Um, I mean, yes, this is, we just read about a whole lot of names and leaderships of where people would be staying or whatever else. But it's important because these names, you, you may not have caught some of these names, but a lot of these names have been repeated over and over and over and over and over and over again, especially when we were talking about in the time of uh, exile. Um, and we see that the same family groups continue to come up as being the ones who are faithful to God, who have, who have through generations followed in the ways of God. And uh, we see their faithfulness over and over and over again. And uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is just once again a testament of those who have been faithful. Like here, one example being in, in verse 22, we see the descendants of Asaph. If we read in the Psalms, many of the Psalms were written by Asaph, who was um, the uh, the lead of of singing and song making within uh, David and Solomon's courts. And so we see his descendants once again are responsible for the service of the house of God, and they've continued in their activities up uh, up until this day um, and have been faithful to God. And even in the midst of their um, exile they have not forgotten or or fallen away from god and so we see these constantly these these um groups of people uh who who had maybe been lost um have now come back uh, and uh, to god and so we just thank god for god's faithfulness not our own that even though we fall straight god calls us back to serve him to um, to lift him up and he gives us responsibilities for his house and uh, may we take those responsibilities seriously and follow in the ways of God to his glory uh, let's uh, let's thank God together in prayer let us pray father in heaven we give you praise and thank you we thank you for justice we thank you for vindication that you uh, you uphold us uh, in all these stories in the stories of Nehemiah and in Proverbs, uh, that you show us your justice in the world. Lord, today we ask that you might bring justice to our lives. 
uh, bring reconciliation and healing to our relationships. And above all, God, bring yourself to us. Bring us to yourself. Uh, that it's only within you and you alone that we have true reconciliation. It's only in you that we move away from our focus on things that don't matter, like money and wealth and oil and all those things, but that we keep our focus, our eyes fixed on you, that we might fall in your righteousness, and that we might walk in the ways that bring uh, wholeness and healing, those things that bring glory and praise. For you, all glory and honor, uh, now and forever, is yours. Amen. Thank you for joining me today in this day 279. And I just, uh, I just hope that this word of God uh, continues to warm your hearts and your minds, uh, that you would come to understand more and more the love of God, the care that God has for his people, and that God is always welcoming his people back to him, uh, those who are faithful to him, and that even when we're not faithful to him, he still calls us back, and that we might heed that calling and come to him and give him our utmost glory and praise. To God be all glory, now and forevermore. Amen.